Republican Senator John Thune of South Dakota, the majority whip. And, sir, thank you for your time today. Just listening to Chad's reporting hey, there and Steve Mnuchin over the weekend, it really seems as if the next big battle in Washington is what do you do about the states? Do you go ahead and give them more money? And if so, how do you do it? What do you think, as of today, Senator, is the right answer? <laughs> I think that that's right now there's $150 billion that's being made available to the state's bill, specifically for corona relief uh, efforts. And I know the states would like to have greater flexibility. That's something I think there are a number of senators and uh, members of Congress who would consider. Uh, what the Democrats are talking about is adding a whole bunch more money, hundreds of billions of dollars, uh, in addition to what has already been done. And I think what many of our members are uh, prepared to do at this point is let's see what's working, what's not working. Uh, let's not borrow another several hundred billion dollars and add to uh, the dollars that we're already putting out there before we see what kind of impact they've had. Uh, you know, obviously states are in tough spots. We know that. But I don't think there's any amount of Washington, money in Washington or money in the world, for that matter, that can make everybody whole and hold everybody harmless. And at some point, I think we have to come to grips with the reality that all this is borrowed money. And, uh, you know, we're about three point seven trillion dollars in deficit this year alone. So I think we have to look long and hard at what's working, what's not working, see what's effective and, and build on that before uh, coming up with all kinds of new ideas about how to spend even more money. Well, a couple of things here. You mentioned three point seven trillion in, in, uh, in the deficit. It's just staggering. Uh, CPO put that number out at the end of last week. CBO also said 16 percent unemployment in September. I mean, can, can you imagine if we're sitting here at 16 percent employment in September? That's so many months down the line. And then perhaps that at that point, maybe the majority leader, Mitch McConnell, revisits this whole decision as to how much money should be doled back out to the states and city senator. Well, I don't think there's any question that we will be looking and reexamining throughout this entire pride. We're going to monitor what's happening out there, uh, Bill. We made it very clear we will do whatever it takes to respond to this crisis to get America back on its feet. But remember, there is no amount of federal spending in Washington that can substitute for a dynamic, growing economy. And that's why we've got to get this, the economy opened up again. We've got to deal with the health emergency. I think a big part of that solution is having a massive amount of tests available out there so we know who has it and who doesn't, so we can get people back into the workplace, get consumers' confidence again. Uh -huh. uh, I'm hopeful that over the course of the next few weeks and months, we'll see some improvement, as you heard uh, Secretary Mnuchin say, but remember, I mean, we've got, to, we've got to be thinking about not only the near term, but also the long term. And what's the best way to get this economy uh, on, back on track, uh, pull well, out of this so thing and get people back that, to work? Yeah. Speaking of that, Tyson Foods took out a whole page ad over the weekend. It talked about a delicate balance. They're saying that the closures right now are so costly <clears throat> that the, the food supply is breaking. Um, you, you saw that, and it, it would appear that if we continue down this road, that they've got a legitimate point here, Senator. Well, they do. I mean, I think at some point, and that's why the USDA a couple of days ago came out with guidance for meatpacking plants, uh, working with the CDC and the Department of Labor uh, to figure out how to get these plants operating in a safe way. I mean, obviously, the first job is to protect the health and safety of the workers. But there are lots of uh, recommendations that have been made by the CDC and others about how to open up these plants because this food supply issue is an incredibly important one. This is essential. And the security of our food supply in this country is directly related to these processing facilities. And we're talking literally about euthanizing, um, you know, hundreds and thousands of hogs here in this region because they have no place to go. Uh, to get processed right now. And eventually that's going to be felt by every consumer at the supermarket. So this is a very real issue. And I think these are the types of hard decisions we have to make. We've got to find out ways in which, and I think there were a lot of the uh, recommendations that came out uh, over the past few days about how to do this in a way that keeps workers safe, but also allows these plants to get open and running again. It's, um, it's, it's really important stuff. I know you'll be back in Washington next Monday, uh, the 4th of May. Monday is the date when the Senate comes back to work. Sir, and congratulations. You became a grandfather today for the fifth time. <laughs> yes, Best sir. To your daughter, Marissa. <laughs> How about that? Well done. Congratula Thanks, Congratulations, Senator. That's terrific news.